Good morning, guys. How are you? I hope you are fine. I wanted to introduce myself. I am Dina Azadine, Egyptian pharmacist, graduated at 2005, certified board of pharmacotherapy 2015, and certified professional healthcare quality 2017. Working as a lecturer in high school center from 2016 in a board of pharmacotherapy and critical care board. And I am the responsible of the quality department on high score center to prepare who wanted to be CPHQ. CPHQ means working as a quality professional in any hospital. We started our first group last August and our students have already tested in last December. And, how, uh, and now we are waiting for the final result of them, hoping that all of them succeed. This course is four month period and you will be ready to test. The exam done four times per year every four months. We are willing to make English quality course as soon as possible and I will be responsible for it also. Now we will start our lecture today. It's about biostatistics and trial. These two chapters are very important in the exam. Around 30% of the exam, not less than 50 degrees of the exam, about this t uh, these two chapters. I hope you will like it, and we will talk first about the biostatistics. Biostatistics, if we collecting a data. Now we collecting a data. There's types of random variables data types of these data. We want to classify these, these, uh, this data according to type of it. First, add this data qualitative. Qualitative or non-parametric or discrete. All are names of the same meaning. It gives information in non-numerical manner. It may contain numbers, but no decimal numbers. Like number of persons, for example, you couldn't say that it's 1.5 person. It's one, two, three, four, but no decimal number. And we couldn't do any calculation on these numbers. It's two types. First one is the nominal data. Nominal data may be dichotomous if it's two branches or polytomous if it's more than two branches. But I want you to keep nominal data. What's the meaning of nominal data? Nominal data these are group in an ordered manner, like blood groups, group A, B, A, B, O. We couldn't arrange them. We couldn't put, on, put one before the others. The answer always was yes or no. The, the disease is fine or not. Uh, the patients die or not die. So the answer was yes or no is express nominal data. Measure of central tendency with mode, and we will talk about this measure of central tendency, the meaning of the sentence. Any proportion or percentage or frequency express nominal data, and I will give you examples. Example for question that answered with yes or no. Like group has the disease and the other has, hasn't the disease. Uh, the group have uh, take the medicine and the other group didn't take the medicine. If the disease exists or not exists, so it's nominal that. If percentage or proportional, it's also uh, it's also nominal that. If we said that uh, in a hospital uh, there is an infection. 3% infection rate. This is a nominal percentage. If we said we have three death cases from total seven cases in the hematology department, this proportional, it also express nominal data. The second type under the qualitative data is ordinal or categorical data. Ordinal data here we can order the data and rank it in a specific order, like scales, NEHA scale, sedation scale, Galaspocoma scale. So if we see the word scale, automatically we will, say, uh, we will say that the type of the data is categorical or ordinal data. Ordinal data. Measure of central tendency median 
and you, we will talk about this next slides. The other type of data is the quantitative or parametric or continuous data. Here, the data expressed in numerical manners, numerical correct numbers. And these numbers, we can do calculation on it and it accepted to be in a decimal form. Like if we said serum creatinine level is 0.9, or the glucose level is 100.5, so it accepts decimal numbers. There are two kinds of quantitative or continuous data, which is interval or ranked in a specific order with consistency change. But the zero point is arbitrary, means not true, means not the smallest number. There are negative numbers under the zero like Fahrenheit degree or Celsius, and this is the only two examples for the interval data. The other kind of which is, which is ratio, like interval but with an absolute zero, means true zero, so there is no negative numbers, like blood pressure or heart rate or Kelvin's degree. Describing the data. In the previous study, we collecting the data and describing the kind of the data or the type of the data. Now, we wanted to describing this data. How to describe this data? It by measuring of central tendency, which is the point, I see you, a photo, suppress this. See this photo. To express a data, we have to express or say about it two things. Central tendency and variability. Central tendency, which is the point in the center of the data, in the middle. And that another measure of data spread or variable about this point. So the other measures or the other readings of data is around this point. Point. So it's the center of the data, it's the middle of the data. And the variability is how extent other elements of data vary from this center. So we identified the center of the data and how much every element in the data vary of this center. To describe any data, we have to do the two steps. How to measure of a central tendency? Number one, the mean. The mean is the average. It's the sum of all data divided to the number of this data. For example, if we have five readings to four blood pressure or four blood glucose level, five readings. We will sum all the five readings and they divided it to five. This is the average or the mean of these data. The mean used only for continuous normally distributed data. But it's sensitive to outliers. What is the meaning of sensitive to outliers? The meaning is that there is a big number between the data. If there is a big number between the data like 100, let us see an example to be clear. Here, this is an example. We have data readings and we want to calculate the mean for, for this data. This is the measures, 6, 3, 8, 5, and 3. So the mean is 6 plus 3 plus 8 plus 5 plus 3 divided by the number of elements, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So divided by 5, so it's 5. So the 5 is the central tendency. It's the number in the middle and the other numbers around it. But let us imagine if this Three, number three is 100. So when we calculate the mean, it will be 125 over 5. 
so it will be 25. Is 25 is the number in the middle of this data? No. It's only between the 100 and the other numbers, but not in the middle of the data. This is the meaning of it's sensitive to our layer. If there is any big number, it will affect in a calculation of mean. Number two, the median. To calculate the median, we have to order the data from the smallest number to the biggest number. And don't forget this because this is very important point. We have to order the data from the smallest number to the biggest number and get the point which is in the middle of the data. So we search about the position of the number which express the middle of the data or the 15th percent of the data. Also sensitive, it's not sensitive to outliers. The mean was sensitive to outliers, but median not sensitive to outliers. Let's see an example. To know the position of the mean of the median, to know the position of the median, we will do this calculation: n plus one divided by two. n is the number of the data elements. So, for our example, this is the data elements. Here, the data elements is one, two, three, four, five. So, five plus one equals six divided by two is equal three. So, the median is number three third position its position is number three so if we order the data from the smallest number to the biggest number it's uh, the third one one two three so the median here is five this is in the odd number data elements but if the data elements number is even number like in this example one two three four five six we will calculate it in the same manner, n plus 1 divided by 2, so 6 plus 1 equals 7, divided by 2, it's a 3 and a half. And this is the best answer, if you find it, choose 3 and 5, 3.5. But 3.5 is a position, don't forget. 3.5, not the number, it's a position. So the third number, 1, 2, 3. So it's 5.5. This is the median. And this is the best answer to choose. 5.5 or the third and third position and a half, which is between 5 and 6. But if in the choices, 5, 6, 8, we will choose the smallest number, not the smallest, smallest in position. So the third one, not the fourth one. The second one, not the third one. The fifth one, not the sixth one. So we will choose the position number three, which is five. So the median here between five and six. If we find 5.5, it's the best answer. If we, don't find, if we don't find 5.5, we will choose 5, but not 6. So we talked about mean, number 2, median, and the number 3, the mode. The mode is the most number in repetition, the most repeated number. In our example, it was number three because it repeated two times. If eight repeated four, six times, and this is the most repeated number, so it's the mode. So the mode is the most repeated number from the data. This is the least, least one in use. Most common only in the nominal data because it's less in express the central tendency. Again, I want you to know the mean is for interval or ratio, which is continuous data, normally distributed, must be normally distributed. So continuous data, 
normally distributed because we make calculation sum and division we couldn't make any calculation in the qualitative data so it's only for the continuous data which is normally distributed and we will talk about normally distributed in next slides median is for ordinal and continuous data also so we can use median in continuous data if there is any skewing and for ordinal data we will say about skewing and normal distribution in next slides but i want you to know it now mood we will leave it for the nominal data because nothing can express the central tendency of nominal data only the mood now we express the central tendency of any data according to the type of the data how to measure the variability about every measure of the data and the central tendency number one the standard deviation standard deviation always used with the mean standard deviation is the root of the variance it is a square root of the variance square root of the variance means we will make square root for every measure and the mean to show the difference between them so to calculate the standard deviation we will make the square root of every variance and the mean to know how every measure or every number or every element in the data vary from the mean SEM SEM means standard error of mean we will talk about it but I want you to know CV which is the coefficient of variation equal to standard deviation divided by the mean increase in coefficient of variation means that there is a big variability in the data so decrease in the precision we want to always the variations to be little to be the data normally distributed so if the coefficient of variation which is the standard deviation divided by the mean is a big number this means this is, this is a big variation so decrease the precision number two to express variability is the range range is the large value minus a small value also it's sensitive to outliers if we find the larger value 100 and the small value is 3 it will affect the range the percentiles or all give ranking all data and it takes the interquartiles I will show you we will divide the data into four equal quarters so everyone express 25% of the data and we will get rid of the outer quarters the outer two quarters we will get rid of it and we will take the enter two quarters which is express 50% of the debt show so we will take these two inner quarters which express 50% of the data. This is the enter percentile or OGIV. We use the enter percentile or OGIV always with the median to express the variation between the data elements and the median. Enter quartile range express 50% which is in the middle of the data. Now, this is the distribution of the data. I said to you that I will tell you about the meaning of skewing and normally distribution when we talk about a continuous data it's better to be normally distribution 
normally distribution means the bell shaped data bell shaped means that the data is around the mean in symmetrical manner that here 50 percent of the data and the other 50 percent is in the right side of the mean and the mean is in the middle of the data here if we use mean or median or mode both will be equals so mean equal median equal mode to express this data the best to express this data is the mean and standard deviation if the data is positive skewed if the data positive is skewed it means that the data like this Oh, sorry, I will show you a photo, it will be better than this drawing. Like and this is like, see? This is the normally distribution data, it's a bell shade, like we said, the median and the mode and mean is in the middle of the data and 50% in the right side of the mean and 50% in the left side of the mean. This is the continuous normally distributed data. If there is negative skew, negative skew means that the data is uh, sliding or lying on the area of the lower number. So the data here is directed to the lower numbers are more than the bigger numbers. So we uh, named it negative skew. Negative skew, we will find if there is a skewing the median in the middle, and here the mean is lower than the mode. So the mean lower than the median, lower than the mode. This is a skewing in the data. This is sliding of the data is toward the lower number. Here in the positive skew is the opposite. The sliding of the data is toward the bigger numbers, so it's a positive skew. Here we find also the median in the middle and the mean bigger than median, bigger, bigger than mode. This is the positive skew. So we will return to the previous slide. If the data positive is skew to the right tail, it means that the mean bigger than median, bigger than mode. If negative is skew to the left, the mean will be lower than median, lower than mode. The best to express any skewing of the data or the skew with data is the median, as a measure of central tendency, median, and the enter percentile or ogive. The interquartile percentage which is who give but if it's normally distributed the best to describe it is the mean to measure the central tendency and the standard deviation to means uh, to measure the variability from the mean the formal test using to express the normally distributed continuous data is a Kolmogorov Semnerov test. This is the name of the test used to uh, distribute this kind of data. Uh, if we wanted to express our sample, we will use a standard deviation. But if we wanted to express the population, we will use SEM, which is standard error of mean. What is the meaning of population? Population is a group of people carrying the same characters. Like the diabetic patients, all of them diabetic. diabetic. Uh, the hypertensive patients, all of them have hypertension. So this is the population. If we want to express our sample, we will use the standard deviation to express variability. But if we want to express the whole population, we will use the standard error of mean. Confidence interval. 
and the normally distributed data, we find 68% of the values between minus or positive one standard deviation. So plus or minus one standard deviation. Between minus one standard deviation and the plus one standard deviation, we will find the 68% of the data which is in the beige color in our diagram. And 95% of the data between minus two standard deviation and the plus two standard deviation, which is this area. From here to here. So all this will express 95% of the data. And the 99% of the data between minus three standard deviation and the plus three standard deviation. So all this will be 99% of the data between them. This is in the regular. So again, because this point is very important, between minus one standard deviation and the plus one standard deviation, 68% of the data. And between minus two standard deviation and positive two standard deviations, there is 95% of the data. And between minus three standard deviation and plus three standard deviation, 99% uh, uh, of the data. So if we wanted to calculate the 68% of the data, we will put the mean plus or minus one standard deviation. If we wanted to calculate 95% of the data or the confidence interval 95 of the data, 95%, we will put the mean plus or minus two standard deviation. If we wanted to calculate 99 percentage confidence interval, we will uh, put the mean plus or minus three standard deviation. What is the meaning of confidence interval? It's the certainty percentage. For example, if we said that the confidence interval is 95 percent, this means that we are sure, we are 95% sure that this data is true and not by chance. And the only 5% by chance. So again, the confidence interval is the certainty percentage as to how to, to how extent we are sure that this data by real, not by chance. So if we said that confidence interval is 95%, we are sure, we are 95% sure that this data is by real or true and not by chance. And only 5% due to chance. So if we wanted to calculate any of this, like for example, 68% confidence interval, we will put, put mean plus or minus one standard deviation and uh, the other elements, for example, the same. Also, p-value. P-value is the opposite of confidence interval. If we are sure that 95% of the data is not by chance and by true, so it's a 5% only by chance, which is expressed by p-value. So when the confidence interval is 95%, the p-value is 5%. When the confidence interval is 99%, the p-value is 1%. So the p-value is the chance percentage. The p-value, we have to put it in the period of the, of the trial. And the, before the beginning of any trial, we have to put the p-value, adjust the p-value. We want the chance percentage not exceed 5 not exceed 5% or 0.05. We want uh, the chance percentage to not exceed 1%. So we will adjust the p-value to be less than 0.01. So it express the chance. If we find that p-value in any trial bigger than 
0.05, it's non-statistically significant. It means that we will not interpret this data because the two arms of the trials or the two groups is the same. There is no difference. There is no difference between our drug and the placebo. There is no difference between the two drugs. So there is no trial. So we couldn't interpret the result. So the p-value must be less than 0.05. If it's more than 0.05 in any case, in any trial, we don't accept the result. We don't interpret the result. We will say that it's non-statistically significant. It means that there is no difference. Always in any trial, we want to uh, prove that there is a difference. Prove that there is a difference between our drug and the placebo. Prove that there is a difference between drug A and the drug B. If there is no difference, so there is no trial. So we failed to prove what we wanted to, to prove. So the p-value is very important to see in any case and to get sure that it's lower than 0.05. The inferential or conclusion, which is the conclusion of any trial to express the population or to generalize our trial on population. We can make this by two methods. Confidence interval, which is range of mean. Confidence interval can express by two manners. Between two numbers, yeah, confidence interval is between 9 and 11 or confidence interval between 90 and 99. So it express a confidence interval but between two numbers. We want these two numbers not include zero because if it, if it contains zero, like, مثلاً, like for example, uh, if confidence interval between minus one and one, so it contains zero. So it's non-statistically significant. So if the confidence interval expressed by a difference between two numbers, we don't want to contain zero because zero means non-statistically significant. But if it holds the ratio or relative risk, we will talk about it in study design. If it's confidence intervals of odds ratio or relative risk, which is the, the division of nominator and the denominator. We don't want it to contain one because one means that the denominator, the same like denominator. So there is no difference. So non-statistically significant. So confidence interval must not contain zero if it uh, interval between two numbers must contain one. If it's uh, confidence interval of odds ratio or relative risk, of relative risk and p-value mustn't exceed 0.05. If any of this in any case or in any trial, we will not interpret the result and we will say that it's non-statistically significant. So we couldn't generalize these results on population. The other way to uh, generalize the results of population or to express the conclusion of the data is the hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing is null hypothesis or hypothesis. Null hypothesis, null means nothing. So null hypothesis means that there is no difference. Null hypothesis means that there is no difference between the two drugs. So there is no difference between drug A and the drug B. But alternative hypothesis means that there is a difference between drug A and the drug B. Here, if we reject the null hypothesis, reject the null hypothesis, it means that we don't agree that there is no difference. We reject that there is no difference between the two drugs. This meaning that, that there is a difference. If we reject that there is no difference between drug A and B, so we refused this result. We refused that there is no difference. We mean that we say that there is a difference between drug A and the drug B. And if we not reject, not reject means we are agree. 
we are agreed that there is a difference, that there is no difference between drug A and B. So null hypothesis means no difference. If we reject it, we, it means that there is a difference. If we accept it, it means that there is no difference. Here, this is the types of errors. We have two types of errors. Type 1 error, which is alpha error or p-value error. Alpha is the same like p. p-value is the same alpha. We can see it in any, uh, in any case like p-value or alpha. It is the same. Type 1 error is a marriage theory. Marriage theory. Marriage theory. Marriage theory means I said that there is something, but actually there is nothing. So it means that we said that there is a difference between the two arms, and actually there is no difference. Marriage theory, like if we are in a desert and we imagine in front of us on a distance that there is water, but actually there is no water. So it's the marriage theory. So it's type one error. We said that there is a difference. We said there is a difference between the two arms, but actually there is no difference between the two arms. This occurs when we reject the null hypothesis, even it's true. We rejected the null hypothesis. We said that there is a difference. And actually, the null hypothesis is true. There is no difference. Statistically significant but clinically insignificant. It occurs when the drugs or the two drugs statistically significant. So there is a statistically difference, but clinically there is no difference. This happens when the number of participants in the research is large. We talk about the statistically significant. So it's statistically there is no difference, but it's not related to clinically significant. Maybe non-statistically significant and there is a clinically significant. It means that if we have two drugs, one of these two drugs reduce the blood pressure to 80 and the other reduce the blood pressure to 85. So there is clinically no difference non-clinically difference but statistically there is a difference and the opposite of there is clinically significance difference significantly but statistically there is no difference so no relation between two of them statistically and clinically type 2 error is the blindness theory blindness theory it means that there is something and I couldn't see it. I say that there is no difference, but actually there is a difference. So there is a difference, but I couldn't see it. So this is type 2 error, which is beta error. Beta error is always 0.2 and 0.1. But alpha error, which is B value, is always 0.05. The blindness theory, this happens when you get a low number of participants in the research. Okay, when we not reject the null hypothesis, even it should be rejected. The power. How to calculate the power of any trial? The power is equal 1 minus beta error. So it's 1 minus the point 0.1 or point 0.2 according to the trial and according to the case. If we wanted to calculate the power, it will be one minus beta. I say that there is a difference and actually there is a difference. So here we are true, we are right. We said that there is a difference and actually there is a difference. The probability of making correct decision. Set the period before starting the research, we set the power before starting any trial. We put alpha 2.05, beta error 2.2 and 0.1. We, uh, this means that we want the error to exceed this percentage or this number. So this number is accepted, but, it, but, it, but if it more, 
it will it will not be accepted to us when the difference is that i wanted to notice is clear we can reduce the number of participants if the difference is large and clear we don't need more number of participants the opposite we need a small number of participants because the difference is already clear but when the difference is not clear we need a large number of participants to can see it so if the difference is not clear we need a lower sample size if the difference is clear we need a lower sample size or a small sample size but if the difference is clear and big so we need a lower sample size types of a statistical test it's very important you have to keep it well we will classify it according to data type continuous data and ordinal data and the nominal data if the data is continuous it means that it's normally distributed so if the data is continuous but not normally distributed we will consider it ordinal data so if we say continuous data we mean that it's continuous and normally distributed because if there is any skewing in the data we will consider it an ordinal data if the data is continuous and normally distributed and we have two groups only two groups if two different groups it means that there is group a and the group b group a for example will take the placebo and group b will take the drug or group a will take medicine and group b will take another medicine so we have two different groups we will use the unpaired two sample t test unpaired two sample t test if there is a continuous data normally distributed and we have two groups but different two groups if the same group but we will take two measures before and after so we will take uh, for example the reading of the blood pressure before giving the group the medicine and after giving him the medicine giving them the medicine so it will be crossover per the test crossover per the test we will use crossover per the test if it's a continuous data and normally distributed but more than two groups we need to uh, use analysis of variance which is ANOVA test ANOVA test if the three groups different it means that we will give drug A for the first group and the drug B for the second group and the drug C for the third group. So we will use one-way ANOVA, which is single factor ANOVA. This is another name. One-way ANOVA or single factor ANOVA. If we will take three measures, so it's repeated measure ANOVA. So it is the same group and we will take three measures it will be repeated measures ANOVA if they are three groups each group will divide into two subgroups we mean that there's group A and B and C and we will divide every group to two subgroups females and males so we have six groups but three main groups and six subgroups we will use two two way ANOVA two way ANOVA because we have an additional factor like six because we uh, subgroup we make the subgroup from each group to be male and female to be uh, teenage and uh, and old so we have another factor and we have to divide every group to two subgroups we will use two way ANOVA We may use ANCOVA test. ANCOVA, if he said in the case that there is a covariance, covariance or confounder, we will use ANCOVA. It came in the case uh, very clear. 
we need to make a covariance analysis or a confounding analysis. If we see confounding analysis or covariance analysis for a continuous data normally distributed, we use ANCOVA test. Here we will talk about ANOVA, three groups, and the two different groups from the t-test in continuous data. If we use ANOVA, and there is a statistical significance, so the result must be statistically significant. There is a difference between the three groups. It means there is a difference between three groups. To know which group differ from others and which is better, we have to make post hoc tests. So by ANOVA, we know that there is a difference, but we don't know where is the difference. Which group is better than others? Where is the difference? A differ from B from C or D and uh, or C and B only or A only. We wanted to know what is the difference. So we will make post hoc test. But don't forget, only if there is a difference, only or if it's statistically significant. We will make post hoc tests, which is Toki HSD or Pomferoni or Chefe or New Man Curis. Very important. This is after ANOVA three uh, different groups test. In case of independent continuous data, as we said before, that we need the data to be not only continuous but also normally distributed. If it's not normally distributed, you, we will consider it as ordinal data. If we have two independent group and there is a statistically significance between the two groups and we know that by the t-test. So now we know that there is a difference. There is a statistically significance. We have to know if the difference affected the data that it become not normally distributed or it's, it's still normally distributed. So we wanted to know if the difference affected the data. So the data is still normally distributed or this difference made uh, the data to not be normally distributed. We will make these tests to know. The equal variance test, we will put the larger variance divided by the smaller variance. If the result is bigger than two, so the data not normally distributed now. The difference already affected the data. But if this division less than two, so the data is still normally distributed. We can use another test like formal tests. This is also for the difference of variance and the leaven test. So we make this when the t-test result is there is a statistically significant. We want to know if this is difference or this difference affected the data distribution or not. So we make this equal variance test and formal test and the leaven test. For the ordinal data, if there is only two groups, if two groups is independent, so different groups, we will use Wilcoxon rank sum test or Manuetni U test. Wilcoxon rank sum test or Manuetni U test. If dependent, so the same group and we will take two measures before and after, we will use sign test or Wilcoxon sign rank test. See here. Wilcoxon and Wilcoxon, but if the two groups is independent, it's Wilcoxon rank sum test. But if the two groups are dependent, it's Wilcoxon sign rank test. Sign rank test, not only rank test. Wilcoxon rank sum test, Wilcoxon sign rank test. If more than two groups, 
independent cross kill wall is one way and over by ranks cross kill wall is or if it's more than two groups and the dependent Fred man or candle I know that it's difficult to be kept but sorry you have to keep it because it's very important if the data is nominal two groups independent chi square test or Fisher exact test but Fisher exact test if the results is less than five so five measures only five persons only in the trial so it's very rare to use the most common is chi square test if two groups but dependent so the same group and we will take two measures McNamara McNamara if more than two groups independent chi square test dependent Cochrane for the confounder if he, if he measure in or if he mention in the case that there is a confounder and he want a confounder analysis confounder analysis in the nominal data mental Hassenzel mental Hassenzel the correlation The correlation is the strength of the association between two variables. And we always uh, identify this by scatter plot. See this photo. This is a scatter plot. This is the scatter plot. Here, there is a strong association. F, C, increase by or for example a uh, x and y if by increasing x increasing y so it's a positive relationship so the relationship is positive association but if by the increasing of y decreasing of x so it's the opposite relationship so it's negative association or negative relationship if the points is far from each others and there is no line can pass between them or touch all of them there is no association so we can express this by r coefficient that if r equal positive one there is a strong positive association between the two variables if r equal minus one there is a strong negative relationship between the two variables if r equal to zero there is no relationship between the two variables so r which is the correlation to measure the strength of the association between two variables r between minus one to positive one as i said if it minus one so strong negative relationship if positive one string a positive relationship if zero there is no relationship person correlation for parametric data we use only for parametric data sperm uh, sperm maneuver for ordinal data or non normally distributed continuous data so person correlation we use person correlation for parametric data and the sperm maneuver for ordinal data or non-normally distributed continuous data. The regression. Sorry, I don't know if uh, the recorder, the recording was stopped or not. So I will say again about regression. Regression is the causal relationship. So it asks us if there is a causal relationship between the two variables or not like uh, cancer and smoking lung cancer and smoking there is a causal relationship it may be one variable like cancer like lung cancer and smoking and maybe more variables like diabetes and obesity and uh, more sugar intake and age this is more variables cause diabetes regression is r squared r squared so it doesn't have 
are negative numbers. It's zero or one. Zero means that there is no causal relationship, and one means that there is a causal relationship. Regression type of the data. Regression type according to the type of data and the number of variables. According to the type of data, if the data is continuous, continuous data means continuous and normally distributed, we can use linear regression. If one variable, like we said in lung cancer and smoking, it's a simple linear regression. But if more than one variables, like the diabetes has many causes, like obesity, like age, like more sugar intake, so it's more variables, so multiple linear regression. If the data is categorical or continuous data but skewed, we will use logistic regression. If one variable, it's simple logistic regression. If more than one variable, it's multiple logistic regression. Again, it's according to the number of the variables. This is schedule, collecting all the tests that we say. Uh, if we see that it's easier to you to keep it, okay, study it from here. The nonlinear regression. Nonlinear regression, it's only in pharmacokinetics. We will not talk about it in biostatistics. Polynomial regression only for number of responses. It's not our topic. The survival analysis, if he mentions in a case that he won't survival analysis or he asked about survival analysis. Survival an analysis, which is a time between entry in a study and some event like death, like myocardial infarction and mostly death. So we couldn't use the t-test or linear or logistic regression, but use Kaplan-Meier method or log rank test, which compare between the survival distribution if it two or more groups. But if he asked about the hazard ratio, hazard ratio specifically, we will use Cox proportional hazards model to evaluate the covariates of hazards. So if he asked about the survival analysis and didn't specify the hazard ratio. We can choose Kaplan-Meier or long log rank test. But if he mentioned hazard ratio specifically, we will use Cox proportional hazards model. Sensitivity of a test. The sensitivity of a test is the ability of the test to identify correctly the affected individuals proportion of, per of persons testing positive among affected individuals. So if we have a group of patients, and I know well that all of them is virus C positive, we will count how many persons will my test give the result positive among these patients. So all of them virus C positive, and I know this well. I wanted to check my test, how many times it will meet the correct result. So how many positives will the test be capable of, de of detect among which has positive disease? This is the sensitivity of the test. Sensitivity, if a patient has the disease, we need to know how often the test would be positive. So it's searched about the positive. This is the rate of pickup of the disease in a test and is called the sensitivity. How to calculate the sensitivity and it's very important in the exam. Test results of plus or minus affected persons, which is true positive and false and negative. This is the sensitivity. The sensitivity, true positive, true positive, which is patience, and I know that he is positive, and the test gave me the correct result that it's positive. 
So I call this true positive. The test gives the result positive and he is in the true positive. So it's a true positive. And we will divide this true positive divided to the sum of total posi uh, true positive plus false negative. False negative, which is in real positive. But the test gives me a wrong result that he is negative. So it's a false. So I called it false negative because it's in real, it's positive. But my test is wrongly gives me the result that it's negative. So I called it false negative. So it is a positive in real. So to calculate the sensitivity, we will divide the true positive, divide it by the sum of true positive plus false negative. The specificity, the specificity of a test is the opposite of the sensitivity of a test. Specificity is the ability of the test to identify correctly non-affected individuals. So it searched about the negative people. Proportion of persons testing negative among non-affected individuals. So he searched about the negative. I want my test to detect that this person is negative when he is truly negative. And I will measure how many time he will give me the correct uh, the correct result. This is the rate at which a test can exclude the possibility of the disease and is known as the specificity. How to calculate specificity? Specificity search for the negative. So total negative divided uh, true negative sorry true negative divided by the sum of true negative and false positive false positive which is true negative which is negative in the true or in the real it's in the real negative but my test gave me wrongly the result as a positive so i called it false positive so it is a true negative divided by true negative plus false positive. Positive predictive value. Positive predictive value if the test result is positive, what is the likelihood that the patients will have the condition? To what extent should I trust the result of the test if it's positive? What the percentage of my certainty about this result? This is a post. This is a positive predictive value. If the result is positive, to what extent I am sure that this is correct? Probability that an individual testing positive is truly affected. So here. Positive and the negative. Affected, which is in the real affective. So A, it's positive by the test and by the real. So it's the true positive. Here it's non affected in the real, but my test gave me a result at positive. So it's as a false positive. Here in the negative, negative, but he is affected. So it's a false negative. Negative, the test gave me negative, and he is in the real non-affected. So it is a true negative. Here we make the total positive, which is a true positive, plus the false positive. And the true negative plus the false negative. And the sum of the affected person in real, which is a true positive, True positive plus the true negative and non-affected, which is B and D, which is the false positive and the true negative. The positive predictive value equal to A divided by A plus B. 
So it's the percentage of the positives. It's A divided by A plus B. So it's true positive divided by true positive and the false positive. Positive. All of them is positive. But in sensitivity, this false positive was false negative. Here, all of them is positive. True positive and divided by true positive plus false positive. This is the positive predictive value. It's very important in the exam. The negative predictive value is the opposite. Probability that an individual testing negative is truly non-affected. Proportion of non-affected persons among those testing negative. So negative predictive value, if the test result is negative, what is the likelihood that the patients will be healthy? How to calculate it? The same like we said in the positive predictive value. We will make the table in the same way. And we calculate the negative predictive value to be the, two, the true negative divided by true negative plus false negative. So all of them is negative. True negative divided by true negative plus false negative. So it's not like specificity. And the specificity, this false negative was false positive. But here, a negative predictive value, all of them is negative. In a perfect test, the sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and the negative predictive value would each have a value of 1. The lower the value, the nearer to 0, the less useful the test is in that respect. This is an example of a case. Imagine a blood test for gastric cancer tried out on 100 patients admitted with hematemesis. The actual presence or absence of gastric cancer was diagnosed from endoscopic findings and biopsy. The results are shown in the table. Positive by the result or by the test and gastric cancer present or absent. So here, number 20 is the true positive, positive by the test and in the real, he has a disease. So both of them positive, so it's a true positive. Here, the test gave me the results that it's positive, but he is a healthy. He doesn't have a gastric cancer, so it's a false positive. This is a true positive, and this is a false positive. This is a true positive. And this is a false positive. And five. This is negative by the test, but in the real, the gastric cancer is present, so it falls negative. Falls negative, and here it is a true negative. The test measure him negative, and the disease not uh, not present. To calculate the sensitivity, it's equal to true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. So 20 divided by 20 plus 5, so equal 0.8. Specificity, the specificity is the true positive. So true, uh, sorry, specificity is true negative. So true negative, which is 45, divided by the true negative plus true negative plus the false positive, which is 30, equal 0.6. Positive predictive value equal to the true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. So it's a 20 divided by 20 plus 30. All of them is positive. 
the negative predictive value. It's the true negative, which is true negative, true negative, which is 45, divided by true negative plus false and negative. So it's 45 plus 5 equal 0 0.9. I hope that it's clear now. The likelihood ratio seconds. The likelihood ratio, which is LR, is the likelihood that the test results would be expected in a patient with the condition compared to the likelihood that same result would be expected in a patient with the condition. Here we measure the likelihood ratio according to sensitivity and specificity, both of them. So I check the test well, check the positive and neglect the negative or not. Both sensitivity and specificity. LR is equal sensitivity divided by 1 minus specificity. Now it is the time of very important MCQs. If the mean was 4 and the standard deviation we don't remember it. The person who gave us the case couldn't remember what it was in the exam. One or two. What is the maximum would be between, what is the maximum percentage would be between two and six? He asked about the confidence interval. He wants the confidence interval which will be between two and six. And he asked 68%. Or 95% so we will solve this problem or this case as a two cases if the standard deviation was one if it was in the exam one so 68% confidence interval will be equal to the mean plus or minus one standard deviation so four plus or minus one Standard deviation equal 1. So 1 multiply 1 equal 1. 1 standard deviation equal 1. So 68% confidence interval will be from 3 to 5. So it's wrong. He wants to be between 2 and 6. 95% confidence interval equal mean plus or minus 2 standard deviation. We said this slow when we talk about the normally distributed curves. The bell-shaped curve mean plus or minus 2 standard deviation. So 4 plus or minus 2 to equal from 2 to 6. So the correct answer would be B if the standard deviation was 1. <coughs> Sorry. If standard deviation was 2, 68% confidence interval will be mean plus or minus 1 standard deviation. So 4 plus or minus 2. One standard deviation here equal two, so from two to six. So this is a correct answer. And the ninety-five percent confidence interval equal mean plus or minus two standard deviation, which is four plus or minus four equal from zero to eight. It's a wrong answer. So we solved it as a two problems, one with a standard deviation one and one with a standard deviation two. It will mention in the exam the standard deviation, but who uh, talked to us about with this case didn't remember what was the standard deviation in the exam. What is the type of data for Galasco comma scale? Nominal, ratio, ordinal, interval. We said any scale will be ordinal data. If B value less than 0.01, the likelihood that the result by chance is 99%, 91%, less than 1%, less than 15%. We said that p-value expresses the likelihood of a chance. So here p-value uh, or the chance less than 1%. Methods of a statistical test found in research in Methodology, abstract, conclusion, introduction, methodology, in this case, uh, you will know about it in regulatory chapter. About factors affecting the sample size. 
We use big sample size when the difference is big. We use a small sample size when the difference is a small. We use a small sample size when the difference is big. Yes, yeah, this is a correct answer. Because if the difference is clear, we don't need a big, a big sample size. We need only a small because the difference is big and clear. But if the difference is a small and not clear, we want a big sample size. So it's the opposite. Small sample size when the difference is big. The same question, but in another method. A trial had to use large sample size. What is the reason behind using this? This comparing big difference, trial comparing small difference, or oh, large sample size because the trial comparing small difference. The same idea of the previous two questions. New drug is being compared with an existing drug for the treatment of chronic myelogenous leukemia. Currently, the study is designed to detect a minimum 15% difference in response rates between the groups. If one exists with P, minimum than, uh, minimal than uh, 0.05. If the study needed to detect a minimum 10% difference in response, which one of the following changes to study parameters would help ensure this? So the, the difference was 15. Now we wanted to measure the difference while it's 10%. So here the difference is very small. So we need a large sample size. So decrease the sample size, increase the sample size, select an alpha 0.01 or 0 .00 alpha. 0.001 uh, so it's increase the sample size this is a correct answer falsely accept null hypothesis falsely accept null hypothesis so we have to we should have to reject it but we accept it falsely so we said that there is no difference but actually it was a difference so we couldn't see the difference. So it is a blindness to theory. So it's type 2 error. Falsely accept null hypothesis means it should have been rejected. But we see or, or we say that but we say that there is no difference. But actually it was a difference. So there was a difference. And we couldn't see it. So this is a blind in a theory. So it's type 2 error. Hypothesis testing is for significance or magnitude. The hypothesis tests and confidence interval to express significance. Studies at research done at healthy young volunteer what is the reason extrapolated to the targeted population to give us information about geriatrics how geriatrics and this is healthy younger volunteer this is the only way to make a research no we wanted to extrapolate our sample to include all the population to can generalize the results on the population we want our sample to express the, re the real population. In a comparison between two drugs, in reduction in myocardial infarction, p-value was less than 0.01. And in reduction of mortality, p-value was less than 0.2. Oh, 0.2. So, the two drugs are non-statistically significant, and the reduction of mortality. So we couldn't interpret the reduction of mortality. So if the choices A and B, power of the study in reducing myocardial infarction, 99%, power of the study in reducing myocardial infarction, 1%. C and D, power in reducing mortality, we said that we will not interpret the reducing of mortality because it's non-statistically significant. There is no difference between the two groups in reduction of mortality. So it's A or B. He asked about the power, not the percentage of a chance. 
the percentage of a chance was 0 0.01, less than 0 0.01. So we are sure that this study reducing myocardial infarction, 99%. This is the power of the study in reducing myocardial infarction, 99%. Two aminoglycosides were found to reduce risk by 10%. What is the power if the false rejected null hypothesis is 0 0.05? False rejected null hypothesis, which is type 1 error, which is alpha. And if the false accepted null hypothesis, which is type 2 error, which is beta, 0.2. He wants the power. The power equal 1 minus beta. So 1 minus 0.2. So it's 0.8. We have to translate the case correctly. Here, rejected the null hypothesis. So rejected or refused that there is no difference. But what, this is was false because there was a difference. So there was a difference and I couldn't. So here I said that there is a difference. I said there is a difference because I rejected the null hypothesis. So I said that there is a difference, but it was false because there was no difference. So it's the merging theory. So it's type 1, alpha, 0.05. But here, we falsely accepted the null hypothesis. So, we said that there is no difference. But it was falsely, because it's a difference. So, it was a difference, but I couldn't see it. So, it is a blind in a theory. It's type 2 error, which is beta. If I wanted to calculate the power, I have to use the beta, not alpha. So, the power equal 1 minus beta. So it equal 1 minus 0 0.2 equal 0.8. Trial compared two antihypertensive drugs. Drug A, systolic blood pressure 85, and the drug B, systolic blood pressure 80. B, 0.09. Oh, it's more than 0 0.05. So none is statistically significant. So statistically, there is no difference. But clinically, there is a very small difference between the two measures of systolic blood pressure, 85 and 80. It's very small. It has no effect on the blood pressure. What's your interpretation to these results? The results are statistically significant, but clinically non-significant. No, we said that it's statistically non-significant. The results are statistically non-significant, yes, but clinically significant. No, because it's clinically also non-significant. There is no difference between our blood pressure and systolic blood pressure between 85 and 80. It's the same. So clinically, also there is no difference. The results are neither statistically significant nor clinically significant. Yes, this is the correct answer. It's non-statistically significant and non-clinically significant. The results are both statistically significant. No, the results non-statistically significant. So the correct answer here is C. The same idea of the previous question. Trial compared two antihypertensive drug. Drug A, systolic blood pressure, 85. Drug B, systolic blood pressure, 80. But here, P, which is alpha, equal to 0.05. So it's statistically significant. What's your interpretation to these results? The results are statistically significant, but clinically non-significant. Yes, it's statistically significant here because beta equal to 0 0.05, not exceed 0 0.05. But clinically non-significant, as we said, there is no difference between systolic blood pressure 80 and 85. So the correct answer here will be A. 
Patients with hepatic encephalopathy, a study was conducted to measure sodium excretion before and after treatment with albumin, as shown in the table. So the same group, and we will make the measure before and after. This measures is measures of albumin, so it may contain a decimal number. So it's continuous data, continuous data, but the same group and the two measures, so it dependent. What is the test to use? Wilcoxin, per T test, on per T test, cross cal test. For the continuous data, a T test. Here, the same group and the two measures, so a per T test. Randomized double blind parallel trial compares the three hypnotic drugs for their effect on sleep latency, measured at the mean time to sleep onset. So here we want to measure the time. The time is a continuous data. And the finding, finding that drug A is better than drug B, beta less than 0.05. And that drug C is better than drug A, beta less than 0.01. Very excellent. The investigator used a student t-test to test the hypothesis test to each drug was equal to the other. Which one of the following is a true statement? Student t-test, we said that it's used for only two groups, but here we have three groups, A and B and C. Investigator used the appropriate statistical test to analyze their data. Drug C is the most effective of these drugs. The statistical methods used by the investigator likely resulted in type 2 error. Analysis of variance, which is ANOVA, would have been a better hypothesis test for the data at hand. Yes, this is a correct answer. The investigator should have used the ANOVA test because this is three groups. B is not true because he speak like it's clinically. We don't know about the clinical effect of each drug. We speak about the statistical difference between them but we don't know if C more effective or not. There is a difference, but statistically. We don't know anything about if there is a difference clinically or not. So B is not correct. So the correct answer is D. Trials compare between serum creatinine after using the three drugs, serum creatinine, Oh, it accepted to be decimal number, so it's a continuous data. Using three drugs, but the research found that creatinine is not normally distributed. Oh, continuous data, but not normally distributed. So we will consider it as an ordinal data. What did the test use? ANOVA, T-test, chi-square, Kruskal-Willis. Yes, Kruskal-Willis, because it's for the ordinal data three groups, more than two groups, and the ordinal data, because if the data continues but not normally distributed, there is a skewing in the data, we will treat with it as it's an ordinal data. Two groups, one was given aspirin to reduce cardiovascular events, and the other one was given placebo. The aspirin group had three even, events from 19 patients, and the control group had 20 from 30 patients. The reduced events with aspirin can be statistically calculated by which of the following? Per T-test, sperm rank order correlation, Fisher exact test, Kruskal wellis test. Here the data is nominal. He wanted to see the cardiovascular events occurred or not occurred, so yes or no. He wanted to check the cardiovascular events occurred or not occurred. With aspirin, it occurred in three from 19, 19 patients. And in the, the control group, it happened 20 from 30 patients. So yes or no. So it's a nominal data. Nominal data and the two groups, so Fisher exact test. The profit arranged in a scale, scale, so it's ordinal data, and determine who it has big scale close to positively. Group one profit, 
four. It's five from four to six. It expressed in scale from four to six. Group two, it expressed four, which is three and five. Group three, group four. What is the type of statistical study in this study? Here the data is ordinal data. More than two groups, so cross kill wallace Study comparing the rate of mortality and the adjusted mortality time for diabetic patients having sepsis. Manuetni and the logistic regression, chi square and the logistic regression, Manuetni and ANOVA, Fisher exact and ANCOVA. The rate of mortality is nominal death. We want to death occur or not, the patients died or not. We want to measure the number of die patients. So the patients die or not, this is the result. So it's nominal data. So C, uh, B or D, B or D. But here, mortality time and sepsis, there is a relation between them. There is a relation between the mortality and the sepsis. It's a causal relation. The patients will die because he has sepsis. So it's a regression, regression because it's a causal a relationship between the two groups. So it's B, not D, chi-square and logistic regression. Study compare three formulation, tablet, liquid, capsule of the same drug. The formulation were compared to placebo to measure their efficacy in reducing pain. Each group has five subjects. Each th subject took all the formulation randomly. So each subject take all the three formulation and the placebo also. So it's the same group and we will take more measures. The researcher will measure the elapsed time to pain disappearance. Elapsed time, time is continuous data. So we have continuous data, more than one, more than two groups, but dependent because three measures for the same group. So repeated measure ANOVA, perdity test, cross Wallace test, chi-square, it's repeated measures ANOVA, repeated measures because it's dependent, the same group, and the ANOVA because it's continuous data, more than two groups.